Joining me now is Republican Congressman Scott Ridgell, member of the Budget and Armed Services Committee. Representative Ridgell, thank you for joining me. Hi, Alex. I want to talk about the budget, but first, what about that straw poll? Is Rand Paul your pick for 2016? Well, I certainly haven't made that decision, but I appreciate his bold um, defense of liberty and limited government. And I certainly support uh, the filibuster th that he offered. I thought that was uh, the right thing to do. Thirteen tough hours, but uh, I'm glad he did it. Yeah, that was a memorable 13 hours, that's for sure. Um, in the interview that we just played, you heard Congressman McCarthy repeating the claim that the GOP won't allow any new taxes. Does your party really believe that the Democrats will just cave with no compromise? Well, Alex, you may know that I was a Republican, one of the few who was saying we needed a, a bit more revenue in addition to getting that through growth, but also through tax reform. Uh, I made that case all during the fall, and when we got up to the fiscal cliff, I was hoping that the agreement would incorporate uh, spending reductions as well. And as you know, it didn't. It was $600 billion of increased taxes, didn't even begin to address spending, and so I voted no for it. But um, I'm really asking my Democratic colleagues and, of course, the President to help us address spending. Our budget goes up by about 3.5%. Uh, their budget, the administration's, goes up by about 5%. So both of them go up. It's just that uh, the Democrats are going up uh, really far, far higher. But, but Representative Ridgell, are there, are there others who are like-minded, like you, in the party? How, how many? Well, th there are some, but, but Alex, I, I do want to make the point here that it truly is spending that's, that's driving this train. And I was very disappointed uh, in our president when, after the election, he put it this way. He said, uh, he said, we need to begin to take a look at how we reform entitlements. Now, this is after he'd been in office for four years. And I had the opportunity to speak with the president for about, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12, 15 minutes or so, privately one day. And I shared that with him. Um, I think he's sincere in his desire to, to get our fiscal situation in order. Uh, I don't question that at all. I, I do have a greater sense of urgency, though, I think, than, than hmm. the president does. Well, we do have the budget proposals now from your colleague Paul Ryan in the House and then Democrat uh, Patty Murray in the Senate. And as we throw up these comparisons for our viewers to look at, do you find any ground for compromise between the two of them? Well, this is what I'm so passionate about. I, I, I always look for that because we can't stay on this path. I tell my friends, my, my Republican colleagues, look, we can go out there on the floor and vote uh, 233 with no Democrats joining us, kind of thump our chest and say, well, we kind of showed them, but nothing gets done. So we really do need to find common ground just as Americans to navigate through this fiscal uh, situation. I was pleased that the president put on the table a chain CPI. That's a tangible step in his direction. Uh, I think we've been very bold, and I'm really proud of our conference for, for putting forth this budget that does responsibly address uh, entitlement reform. That, and, uh, now that, that may be, but when you have reactions such as Chris Van Hollen calling the Ryan budget a hoax, uh, Mitch McConnell calling the Murray budget both a disaster and a left-wing manifesto, are either sides actually ready to work together or are we stuck in this sort of rhetoric vortex? Al Alex, it's a good question and I am intent and determined to dial back the rhetoric. Uh, we're Americans before we're anything else and this this hyperpartisanship is hurting our country, and I just go where the numbers lead me, and that leads me to this conclusion: that expenses have to come down a far, at a far higher rate than revenues have got to got to rise. I'll give you one quick example here of how we really need to grow the economy. Our local uh, economy here could gain 18,000 jobs if the administration would eliminate its ban on coastal Virginia energy hmm. here in our district that's being hurt so hard by sequestration. The governor wants it. The General Assembly wants it. I ran on it. Our two U.S. senators, both Democrats, want it. The administration is holding that up. Hmm. And uh, we, we've got to focus on job creation. That's the first place to go for new revenue. Well, um, I do know that you took a lot of heat from your fellow Republicans when you traveled to the Newport News shipyard with uh, the president before the sequester. Are you worried about that coming back to bite you in your next primary? Because it's been suggested time and time again that that is a lot of the reason for the rhetoric that I was citing, that type of rhetoric earlier. People are afraid of being primaried. 
Alex, I was raised by an Iwo Jima Marine. My dad's 90 years old. He's still doing great. He was my inspiration to run. He taught me to put my country first. And when I had the opportunity to meet with the President of the United States, I knew what I needed to do. They offered, and I told uh, the fellow who called me, I said, please relate to the President that I accept with gratitude. We need more communication in Washington, not less. And it doesn't mean you capitulated, but uh, civility is essential in our republic for us to get things done. And uh, it was the right thing to do, and I'm not worried about a primary. Certainly if somebody runs, well, we'll, we'll take them on. But I feel good about how I'm representing the district. Well, and I bet your dad's proud of you. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Thank you very <laughs> much. So. He's a good Republican man. Congress, so much, Congressman Alex. Scott Ridgel. Thank you. This week, President Obama will embark.